Hi guys, ready for a video about how to express future in English? The expression of future in English is hard since we have different tenses to express a future action. Those tenses are used differently depending on the situation you want to express in each sentence. So here let's have a few tips for you to distinguish the different tenses when expressing future because we as Spanish speakers tend to use will all the time because it's like a direct translation of our future in Spanish. Are o vendré o creo que trabajaré. In this video we are going to have a look at these four tenses. Intention, we are going to have a look. The first one is will, the second one is be going to, and the third present continuous, and finally we will have a look at present simple in a very specific use. Okay, let's start with will. Regarding form, Remember, will is always followed by infinity without to. If it's a negative sentence, you can use will not or contract it like won't. And if it's a question, you make an inversion and you use will first and then followed by the subject. When do we use it? Well, mainly will is used for expressing probability or possibility or when you are not certain about something and in a way, you are making a prediction. Imagina que una amiga te dice que no sabe ni que no está segura si podrá venir a verte el fin de semana. Entonces tú le dices a otra amiga la siguiente frase. I'm not sure if my friend will come this weekend. Como no estás seguro, entonces utilizas will. Another use of will is to express beliefs. Estás hablando con un compañero de clase sobre un examen de mates que has hecho y sabes que el profe es un poco tardón corrigiendo. Entonces le dices a tu compañero Buddy, you think the teacher will correct the exams for next week? Will is also used for promises in another way for determination. Mami siempre le dices cuando la habitación está desordenada Mami, I promise I will tidy it up next week. In this sense, as when the new year comes you always make resolutions that in a way are promises to yourself. You promise that you won't do something or you will do it. Te encanta el chocolate. Y cada vez que estás depre, vas y te echas. You are a chocoholic. And then when the new year starts, cuando empieza el nuevo año, dices, I will never eat so much chocolate again. Finally, and this is the last use of will, this form is used for volunteering. Tu mejor amigo es muy bueno en mates y a ti se te dan fatal. Y como es tan buen compañero, la tarde de antes del examen te dice Buddy, don't worry, I will help you with maths. In this sense, will is also used for decisions taken at the moment of speaking. The typical example is Suena el fijo de tu casa, que cada vez suena menos, pero bueno, tú estás estudiando, estás deseando levantarte de la silla. Cuando suena el teléfono, te ofreces y dices Don't worry, I will pick it up. The other two forms which are very common to use future time in English are present continuous and the form be going to. They are very similar, but there are some differences between them. Very slight, but you have to know them. Be going to is simple in form and very common too. Just use, remember, the verb to be in any form, according to the subject, plus going to, plus infinitive. We use it for plans and intentions when you have something in mind. Ahora que se ha acabado el estado de alarma y por fin puedes ir a visitar a tus abuelos en Alicante, el próximo fin de semana le dices, Next weekend I'm going to visit my grandparents in Alicante. Como excepción en la petición romántica de matrimonio, Utilizamos will you marry me. O en el caso de los cumpleaños, también utilizamos will. No es una intención, no es un plan porque cumplimos años de todas maneras. Entonces dices, she will be 20 next month. The last use of be going to, apart from intentions and plans, is when there is a prediction with evidence that is so clear that something is going to happen. De nuevo, Otro ejemplo muy típico. 
hay un nubarrón negro pero un nubarrón, y está claro que va a llover y no has cogido el paraguas Dice, oh my god I should have taken the umbrella it's going to rain well the other form is the present continuous although you are familiar with it because it's used for actions that taken at the moment it's also used for arrangements in Spanish preparativos We could say that the present continuous is used for definite plans, for fixed plans that are 100% sure. En pocas palabras, si es una intención o un plan, utilizas be going to, y si ya lo tienes hiper organizado, hiper preparado, y has quedado, ya tienes todos los, los arreglos y los preparativos hechos, entonces utilizarías el presente continuo. Veamos un par de ejemplos. Aunque con la pandemia, por desgracia, no hay grabaciones, Vuestro tutor ha organizado un habitual y estáis todos muy ilusionados. Entonces le dices a tu compi, I am wearing a no awesome dress for my prom. Porque ya tienes el vestido comprado y has decidido que te lo vas a poner. Tras el confinamiento ha descubierto que te encantan los juegos de mesa. Entonces incluso haces partidas con tus amigos de forma habitual. Y quieres invitar a otro y le dices, We are playing a new Walking Dead Boy Game, do you want to join us? En este ejemplo, tú ya has quedado con otros amigos y estás invitando a otro para que se vea. <risa> Vamos a por el último tiempo verbal y es el presente simple. As you know, present simple is used for regular actions, but it can also be used for expressing future when talking about timetables or schedules. I mean, when you are talking about flights, trains, buses, or films, etc. You can use the present simple. En este ejemplo vamos a combinar dos formas verbales que expresan un tiempo futuro de las que acabamos de ver. Definitely I'm flying to Bilbao this weekend. The flight leaves from Corvera Airport at 8 o'clock. Ahí usamos el presente simple, leaves, porque es un horario fijo. O has quedado con un amigo para ir al cine ahora que se puede, y es muy tardón y lo sabes. Y le dices, hurry up, the film starts at 10 o'clock. Remember not to be late for Doctor Strange in the multi-universe of darkness or for Panther 2 in 2022. Well, this is it. This has been an overview of the different tenses that you can use for expressing future. Have a look at this chart with the summary of the main points and a few more examples. There will be also material for use in the future in our webpage Aprendo en Casa, Región de Murcia. Don't feel discouraged with the use of future. You just need to get a lot of practice to internalize the use of future in a natural way. I hope you will use the future the best you can. Bueno chicos, la teacher se despide y os espera en los próximos videos.